Hi, you're with Chandeep once again at Goodly. And in this video, I'm going to continue discussing how to merge data from Excel files. But this time, we're going to discuss that how do you merge data when the data is in an uneven structure. Now, by uneven structure, what I mean is that uh, maybe two of the files have the same structure, but maybe one of them doesn't have the same structure as the, the rest two. So let's just take a look. So I'm going to go back to the folder that I am working with, which is my shared folder. And I have uh, 2005 to 2009 files, which was what we created until the last video. So let's just open 2009 data and let's just uh, make the data structure uneven. So uh, let's just say for some good reason, somebody who's sending you the data doesn't really name the customer column as a customer anymore. He starts to name the customer column as a client. And he also calculates the profitability, which is no, which wasn't there in the first four files and which is there in this file. So profit divided by the amount will give you profitability and you drag it down and you have the profitability in this. And for no good reason, he just like kind of leaves, you know, one, two columns in between and maybe, you know, one row here and maybe one column also he leaves it uh, in the start. So the data is kind of uneven right now. You can see there are two major changes, which is and one definitely we don't have the customer anymore. We have a, a name called client. And then we also have an additional column called profit, right? And how would Power Query handle that? I'm going to save this file, close it. And we already made a query in the last video where we were combining 2005, 2009 data where the data structure was the same. Now in 2009, the data structure isn't the same. Now let's just take a look at how will Power Query handle this in case I now press a refresh. So I'm just going to click on refresh and let's just take a look at what happens. Again, 753 rows have been loaded and this is all good until 2005. Let's just take a look at what happens when the year changes to 2009. So just take a look here. You can see that um, obviously I would not expect to have anything in the customer field because in our Excel file, the customer column was not anymore as customer, it was as client. So I just need to go and fix this query and make it work. So I'm just going to click on the shared files, which is the query that, I, that I've created. And let's just take a look at where did it kind of uh, falter. So I'm just going to go to the source file and you can take a look that as of now I have four files. I did not have five files. Let's just refresh the preview and I start getting 2009 as well. Let's just take a look at what happened in the second row. So Excel files got filtered. Then what happened in the third step? Then I only pick up the files which have year dash 20 as a starting, which is good. Um, remove other columns. So I, I just keep the files that I need, which is the five files. And then uh, now, as soon as I remember that, as soon as I clicked on the double headed arrow, it just gave me the list of uh, all the files. I mean, it just gave me the data for all the files now. And all of these four steps were created automatically. We didn't create these steps. Let's just take a look at what's going on inside them. So when I click on invoke custom function one, what Power Query does is Power Query goes inside every single Excel file, which is this file, takes the data, converts into a table structure because Power Query is able to read tables. Now, if you just take a look at the table right here, if I click on the empty space, I'll get to see the actual data, five data, which is good, five columns, six columns, and the same structure here, the same structure here, the same structure here. But now in 2009 data, I would not have the same structure. Now, because um, we combine the file using the first file, which is 2005 file, it is referring to these five columns as standard five columns. Now I have to manually expand the additional columns that have been added in, in um, the data to kind of take an account of those columns as well. So here is what I'm going to do. So I take a look at the next step, what happens here. It just removes the other column. So I had a binary column as well. It just keeps the tables, which it, it has created from the Excel files and removes the binary column. It doesn't need that anymore. And then from here, it is going to expand it. Now, let me tell you, when it expands this data, obviously it will expand as per the first Excel file, which is a 2005, right? Now I need to expand as per, you know, the current structure. So I need to click on load more. So what I need to do is uh, from here, I need to kind of rework my query. I'm going to delete this step, which is the change type. I'm just going to delete this step, which is uh, expanded table one, because the expansion is currently has happening as per 2005. So I expand this manually. I click on expand. It gives me the six columns as expected. I uncheck this box and I say that I want to load more columns in case there are any. And you can see that I have more columns loaded. 
right? And I'm just gonna click on okay. Now Power Query is going to load the other columns as well, which are additionally there in any of the files that are there. Now take a look, I uh, don't need column four, I don't need column five, the client is null. Uh, obviously it is going to be null until 2008 and after 2008 you will start having the name of the client whereas customer will have null values starting 2009 because you don't have a customer for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smartly merge these columns. Now that I have all the columns with me, I can perform data cleaning operations on these uncleaned items, on these uncleaned columns and then I can clean the data put it in a right fashion here and then I can load it back into Power Query. Now the additional steps that I will do now for cleaning up the data are again going to be recorded and once you run the data again or run the query again with uh, another junk file which is in, in a different format, Power Query is going to do the same steps once again. All right, so here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the client column, take the customer column and merge them together. Because if you have the value here, you have null here. And if you have a value here, you have a null here. So I'm just going to go to the transform tab and click on merge columns. It says, uh, what is the separator? No separator between the two columns. What is the new column name? We well, let's call it cust because we can't really call it customer. We can't really call it client. So let's just call it cust. So I'm just going to say, okay. And we have one column called cust. Um, I don't need the profit column. I don't need the empty null columns, any of that sort. So rather than actually deleting these columns, I'm also having a risk of, um, you know, more columns being added or more null columns being added to my data. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in uh, my home tab and click on choose columns. Now choose columns is similar to remove other columns and uh, I'm just going to click here. I'm just going to say that, hey, I want to choose date column. I want to choose the sales rep, the cost, which is now what I've created, the amount and the profit and maybe the region as well and rest all the other columns which are there apart from these six, six or seven columns. I want to remove them and this is going to create the same step as remove other columns. Now once the data is there, it's all set. All that I have to do is what? You guessed it right. Yes. Close and load. Now it's going to load again 753 rows again if you just take a look at the query but this time uh, this is absolutely correct. So this is actually giving me a number format. Let me just go fix that and let me just change, change that to a date format. So change type to a date format and now I'm just going to load the data and let's just take a look. We have 2009 data. All right, we are all set. Now let's just go and check if it's being automated or not. Let's say the next year, again, somebody sends me the junk file, which has a structure like this. So I'm just going to copy and paste it, uh, make another copy of 2009 and let's just call it as 2010 and let's just also change the dates over. So um, let me just open that and I am just going to uh, add another column here with 365 days added so that I get a 2010 date. Copy this date, paste it on top of this and then delete this column. And let's just also rejig the column. So let's just keep uh, date as second, region as third and the rest junk columns are there already. Let's just also add another junk column in the, in the center. So this is how you got 2010 file, right? Save it, close it and let's just refresh this data and let's, let's click on refresh. Do I have 916 rows added? Absolutely correct. And I should have correct data for 2010. Let's just take a look at 2010 data, which has been recently added. And we have absolutely correct data. So we have profit region and all of the data clearing process happened automatically. All right, so that's how you kind of merge uh, the files, uh, the data from multiple Excel files in case you have the same data structure and in case you have an uneven data structure. All right, thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please put them down below and I'll be happy to help you out. See you next time. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.